Empty houses, they're no good. They destroy our neighborhood. Well, they rolled. They just took nine the on the dot. Nine on the dot. I mean, they pulled up so fast. I didn't have to, I didn't have time I didn't to hear react. No, I didn't even hear no sirens. Or they didn't have, no, they weren't blowing oh, it was, in. It, yeah. was, it, was, it was a sneak up. They didn't want to sneak up. It yeah. was a sneak up. Yeah, yeah, it was a sneak up. But I mean, wow. they, it was within their legal time of 9 uh -huh. to 5. Right. Oh, okay. How many officers would you see down there? Oh, there are so many. I, I, can't, I can't even count the oh, number of cars that are down there. Holy yeah. smoke. They and took away all of the barriers. They took away the barrel. They got a front loader and took the barrel. Mm hmm. Yeah, I seen that's the truck. That's how tax dollars it were. Mm -hmm. The truck came down here, came back down here with a barrier. It was a um, caterpillar. Yeah. It came back down with the barrier. Yeah. 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 Wow. So is somebody actually in the house? No, not anymore. I was in the house. That's how uh, they, they're, they're sealing it. They're taking off the windows and, and sealing All that it work up. we're going to have to undo. I mean, it's like I, I, I would have thought that I was Charles Manson. <laughs> or John Dillinger, the way they rolled up on right, me, you know? Right, right. One one man, and by, by myself in there. Got it, no comment. I feel dirty tricks again, Sandy. Nice to see you again. Yeah, you too. It's been a few years. Surprised that you are pulling this crap again. Well, they always ask me to come along. <laughs> Who the contractors is pulling all the stuff out today? No. If the lawful order is an ethical though, do you? I could face it. You can say no, you unthinking pigs. What's wrong with you? In the end, it comes down to I have a mortgage as well. Right. And a family that I need to provide for. So, so it's scary. There's to a lot of things that, uh, that me saying no to might make me sleep better. Right. But so maybe not, illegal, not this not one, illegal. but if it was an order that you felt more convicted if about. It's an unjust legal order. Right. Then you would say disobey and say no. On this one, unfortunately, laws are on the books that aren't very honorable, but they're on the books, and that's what I'm trusted with doing is enforcing them. So, until there's a legislative change, which I'd like to see as well. Exactly. So you would be able to help out more not. if there was more support for your your role. Definitely. The there's a lot of things that uh, I don't agree with. There's a whole field law for I definitely don't agree with every law that's on this book. I took an oath to protect them all as well as every citizen. So. Well, aren't you not protecting the citizens by doing this today? I'm not protecting them. You're kicking him out of his, you just made a man homeless today. I didn't make him homeless. Homeless? I'm, I'm this is his home. And you kicked him out. George. I've been here for both incidents. This injustice wouldn't be instances. able to happen if it wasn't for There's some for things you. that could have been done before on his part. They might have stopped this. Oh, I see. That's what the bank says. And I agree with some of the things you're saying about the bank, and most of the things. But that doesn't change the fact that we're at a point where the law says this is what has to happen. So what do you do when those laws conflict? Well, you make a, just use my discretion if I have to. Exactly. Oh, no, so you use have, your discretion. Yeah. We don't have that at this You have, you yes, could you use do. your discretion. Do. I don't, as a street police officer, the discretion to not... Well, maybe you need to question the whole institution you're working for is based on a complete fallacy that's of a, violence a and... Question. It's a what? <laughs> that's a big question. It is. It's and I'm asking, as question. someone with a gun and the ability to arrest and kill people in this, in this town, like, you, that's a question you seriously need to consider. I understand. But I'm comfortable with my position. I'm comfortable with my ability to Well, when you have power, of course you're comfortable with it. In fact, power concomitant. concentrates and consolidates. 
I understand. That's the simplified way to look at it when you don't have the Bible. The simplified way. Oh, thank you for well, the Well, I look lesson. at it as a curse in some senses. You know, I have to use the power. I don't always want to, but sometimes I'm forced to. Sometimes the law says there's no, a No, no, no. You just said you have to use the power, and then you said sometimes I don't have to. Or no, sometimes, sometimes I don't want to. I don't. Sometimes oh, oh but you have to all the time. There's a law in the books. If you're smoking a blunt in front of me, yeah. smoking in public, it's a possession in the fifth. I'm supposed to make an arrest on that. Sometimes I can use my But you do have discretion. So you could say, sometimes. you know what, I'm not going to arrest It guy depends guy. on the level of the offense. Depends yeah, I'm not going to arrest the guy. Situation. Yeah. yeah. But uh, it's better if there's money behind the effort or lobbying efforts. Unfortunately, that's the way Somebody government like George works. doesn't have somebody to go down no, to, I, to I Albany agree. or to D.C. and say, hey, guess what, this is happening. You know how government today. works, unfortunately, well above all of us. It's about who you know, who the leaders and the chiefs are. Disgusting because I mean, in the next 10 years, George is going to be trying to find housing and deal with his medical bills and everything else because he doesn't have a huge corporation behind him to go and sit and say, Hey, make this law stick. Or oh, I understand. I've run into these same issues in my personal life. You know, so it's, at some point. it's nice to talk to you. Like, you know, I guess the other municipalities organize this differently. Like, I guess in, in Rochester. They have the police back up the uh, the, the marshal. The marshal, but I guess in Cook County, uh, which is where Chicago is, they have the uh, they have the sheriffs do it, and the, the head sheriff of Cook County knows that this is a racket, and he uses his discretion and he doesn't send any of his police, his sheriffs, to evict anybody out onto the street. He doesn't do that. You can read about it in the paper. If you do your research. You know, that's one of the that's one of the things that will come up. They do have discretion. They know that this is basically a crime, and they're not going to use their their resources that way as a department. So there is no reason for this to be happening and to continue happening. And so I, I appreciate that we've we've looked around on the internet a little bit, but I or whatever research we've done, but I just don't think we know the whole story. And I'm I'm really disturbed by the lack of self reflection, especially with people who are given guns. Okay, that just really, really disturbs me. And from what I understand this morning, they came here and used excessive force. I believe the, the report was that there were 15 police cars to put George on disability out. It's the amount of police they use. Why are you know, police helping a, a bank that got $22 trillion? Dollars. From, from the feds in the first place. I, I, I knew that they were coming. Stand behind you know, they, they yeah. gave me they gave me the the, the the notice that they were coming. But I didn't I didn't expect a response like this. This is this is I mean this, it's insulting. It's humiliating to have this many law enforcement uh, uh, officials, you know, this many police come to evict one man. And I mean, crime scene, Ted? Uh, yeah, what yeah, was exactly. that? They blocked yeah. off both ends well, of the street. Yep. I, I can't like, walk in the public I mean, hot, I, like, like, like I was, yeah. like, like I was going to be blockaded in in my own home with a with a with an AK-47 or something. I, I don't. I don't own, own a gun. Peaceful, I don't even like peaceful guns. Peaceful person. You know? yep. Oppressing a peaceful okay. person. I mean, it's that way. Right? Empty houses. They're no good. They, they destroy, destroy our neighborhoods. neighborhoods. We're paying Bakes money to put people on the street. Taxpayer money is buying this home right now. Taxpayer money is going to be paying to turn this house into Fort Knox and into a home for cockroaches and mice because the banks want to maintain this um, this business plan. But like right now, FHA will take this house from Wells Fargo, bundle it with a bunch of other houses. Whatever of those houses is rentable we will be rented by whoever FHA sells that bundle to, and the rest of them are going to be vacant, vacant zombie houses, houses for cockroaches and mice, not for people. And we think that's wrong on an ethical level. Whatever the law says, we think that houses are for people. And so what's the alternative? The alternative? Yeah, what else can we do? What, what, what else can, can we do? The, alter the alternative, like and there, there's some precedent for houses that are under foreclosure, especially um, if they have the loan history that George is going to tell you about, um, to be transferred to owners. George selflessly says, you know, housing needs to be a community asset. I'm willing to, instead of having this house transferred to me, have it transferred to um, a nonprofit corporation that maintains this house in perpetuity for the community, right? Um, and I think that that's something that hasn't gotten a lot of play. He's 
willing to give up his house, but only if it's going to have people in it. You know, he wants to stay in it. It's his house. But if it goes for the land trust, am I wrong about this, George? Am I no, misrepresenting things? Yeah. All right. I just want to make sure I'm not. Yeah. So, I mean, it's not, it's not somebody who's out. I mean, he's got a right to be, you know, out for himself, out to, like, stay in his house, you know. But at the same time, like, he's doing this for the movement. He's doing this to make housing a human right. And out here protesting, um, speaking loudly, why, what are you saying and what are you hoping to, who are you hoping to reach? We're hoping to reach other homeowners in the area. We're hoping to reach anybody who wants to mobilize around this issue. Um, so there are a lot of people that are under foreclosure. You know, we're in the courthouse. We're looking at people who, you know, are facing eviction every week, you know. Um, we used to have, or yeah, so I mean like we know what the numbers are. We know that there are a lot of vacant houses around here that have gone through the same process and people don't feel empowered to fight. They get scared and they walk away, you know. And the, the fact of the matter is the banks got these bailouts so that they would deal with homeowners. And they're doing what's easy instead of what's right and they're just scaring people off. Banks have not just received half a trillion dollars in bailouts. That's, they did receive that. But the top five banks who got the majority of this money, which would include Wells Fargo, are the beneficiaries of the Federal Reserve to the tune of $22 trillion. It, it was estimated earlier that it was $7 trillion. No, it's more like 20 some trillion dollars. This kind of thing here, taking the path of least resistance to uh, throw people out and resell the house and, and get their insurance money from FHA, it's a scam. It's, 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 it's a legal scam and it's double dipping. It's ridiculous. We need to be insisting with the city, with the county, with the, with the uh, state, with the federal government, this has to stop. And, and we need to carry this and we'll carry it to uh, the local entities here to say, what's going on? Why are you sending police to keep a man out of his, out of his house at this level? This is, this is all the laws that there's a set of laws that counterbalance each other. Those that help creditors, those that help debtors. There needs to be a balance between them. There is no balance. It's all, the banks ask themselves and must ask themselves, what do I have to do to get arrested? Because they, 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 they seem to be able to run away with the, uh, a couple of years worth of GDP from uh, bailouts and then still do this.